All right, the time has come to discuss with you the solutions to the swimming pool and the piece of ice in my boat. Remember, I was in a boat, in my own swimming pool, and I had a big chunk of ice in the boat. I put a mark on the edge, on the wall of the swimming pool, exactly at the water line. I throw the piece of ice overboard, it starts floating because the density is lower than water, and I check the water level. And the question now is, is the water level now above the line that I drew, or at the line that I drew, or below the line that I drew? And then there was a second question. I wait half hour, and all the ice has melted. I again want to check the level of water in the swimming pool. Is it now above the line I drew, or at the line that I drew, or below that line? It all comes down to a good understanding of Archimedes' principle. And that principle is as follows. If an object is in a liquid, in this case in water, and it displaces a certain amount of that liquid. Then there is a buoyant force upwards, which is equal to the weight of the displaced liquid. So I have a rock which has a volume of 1000 cubic centimeters. It's at the bottom of my swimming pool. It displaces 1000 cubic centimeter of water. Therefore, it displaces one kilogram of water. And the buoyant force upwards is then one kilogram of force. You may say, come on now. Weight is force. But kilogram is not a force. Kilogram is a mass. Good for you. I am going to use kilogram force today, whenever convenient for me, as a force. Kilogram force has been used for centuries as the unit of force. In fact, when I was in high school, I first learned about kilogram force before I even learned about Newtons. Yes, of course, a kilogram force is approximately 10 Newtons. So allow me to use the kilogram for easiness in our discussion as a weight. If you go to the supermarket and you buy a kilogram of sugar, it would be reasonable to say the weight is, ten, is one kilogram, one kilogram. You wouldn't even ask for 10 newtons of sugar, would you? Okay. So if we can leverage the idea that kilogram can be used as a force, we will continue that way. So now I'm in the boat with my piece of ice. Let's say the boat, Walter Lewin and the ice have a weight of about 300 kilograms. And the ice weighs about 50 kilograms. 50 of the 300. We are floating, so the buoyant force up first must be 300 kilograms, otherwise we wouldn't be floating. And so the three of us are displacing an amount of water that has a weight of 300 kilograms. Since the ice is only 50 kilograms, the amount of water that is displaced because of the ice in the boat 50 kilograms of water. Now I throw the piece of ice overboard and it floats because its density is lower than that of water. However, its weight is still 50 kilograms. Since it's floating, the buoyant force upwards must be 50 kilograms. So the amount of water that it displaces must be 
must have a weight of 50 kilograms. Therefore, the same amount of water is displaced when the ice is floating on its own in the water or when the ice was in my boat. So there is no change of the water level. It stays exactly at the mark where I have it. Now the ice is melting. I wait half hour and it's now all water. The volume will change. In fact, the volume, the volume will shrink a little, right? Because the density of water is a little higher than that of ice. But the ice changes into 50 kilograms of water. And 50 kilograms of water displace 50 kilograms of water. You can't argue with that, can you? Therefore, the water line will stay exactly where it was right at my mark. We have ignored a very small effect that because the ice melted, the temperature, the overall temperature in the swimming pool may have gone up a little. That may have changed the density a little. That's such a small effect that I have ignored that. So, whether the ice is in my boat or floating on its own in the swimming pool or whether it changes into water, the water level in the swimming pool will not change. That's the answer. The origin of this problem is the one that I have covered many times in my classes and I always ask the students in real time whether they can give the answer. And I do that, of course, when I discuss Archimedes' principle. And the problem there is a little different. Again, I am in my boat, in my swimming pool, but I have a rock in the boat. I've carefully marked the water line in the swimming pool. Now I throw the rock overboard and now the question is when I look at the water level will it be above the line I drew or at the line that I drew or below the line that I drew. When the rock is in my boat the amount of water that is displaced to carry that rock is the same as the weight of the rock. Otherwise, it wouldn't be in my boat floating. So the amount of water that it displays when the rock is in my boat must have the same weight as the rock. Now I throw the rock and it goes to the bottom of the swimming pool. Now the amount of water that it has to displace is only the volume of the rock. And that is clearly less than the amount of water that it displaced when the rock was in my boat. Think about that. Because the density of the rock was probably closer to four or five times that of water. So, since the amount of water that is displaced when the rock is at the bottom is substantially less than the amount of water that was displaced when the rock was in the boat, the water line will go down. So the water will go below the line that I drew on the wall. It's a classic problem and it's, you will find it everywhere on the web. Many of you may have seen it. I thought it was nice to change it to ice. It gave it an extra twist. You have to think a little harder. The rock, I think, is a little easier. Okay, 
Have a nice day. Take care. And of course, of course, we should still be friends.